guys turn into So we'll get started here in a minute. <clears throat> it's still some time, five minutes until it officially begins. Uh, so hopefully I get these, um, hopefully I get these going on a regular basis. We have us to join in, jump in. Um, even if they aren't, even if they just come in to, uh, you know, find out what we're talking about. Um, and we can get information from whoever else uh, comes in, but my vision is uh, to share uh, information with everybody. Uh, whoever's viewing, can you try and jump in to see if I'm setting this up correctly?
one more minute and then we'll get started here.
All right, hold on one second. Still trying to get people on here, so bear with me. It's my first, it's my first time.
I see you, man. Are you there? Yes. Wow, that took a long time. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's the first time for uh, first time for everybody. Well, good. Glad we can get this straightened out. Didn't want to waste your time. No worries. How you been? Good. How you been, man? Been well. How's the, how's the gym? It's good. Staying consistent. I got a lot of uh, family time now, so I'm with the the daughter during the day, and I just kind of work around my wife's schedule. So I'm in early morning, and then go back in the evening when she comes home. So that's good. That's yeah. Good. All right. Well, Cap said he wasn't enjoying it, but I don't. Uh, I don't see him. Let's see. Where's the Steve? So we'll go ahead and get started and see if he jumps in later. He probably had the same questions you did. So now we know how to fix it, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay. So so the main reason I started or wanted to do this was uh, we all have uh, – um, know a lot of things or done a lot of things in the gym, and we know what's worked for us and what hasn't worked for us. And uh, we all have um, – we all want to help a lot of people in whatever – um, capacity that is and um, you know but people don't know where to find us uh, and so if we use stuff like this to get out to as many people as we can um, it'll you know get a lot of more a lot more people to us so we can help them and uh, it'll be a good thing for everybody absolutely uh, the topic that I chose today and it can change once we once we get going uh, if it leads us down some other path, uh, was uh, so we all are familiar with the widely accepted training principles: uh, intensity, frequency, and volume. Uh, intensity is uh, how close to your one rep max you are in your uh, in your lift, or average over over your lifts. Uh, frequency is how often you train. Uh, we will say a lift or a body part and volume is your weight times rep times sets. And then if you want to take it a step further, your total volume is the, um, is all three of those things put together. Um, so, uh, we can go in as in like our opinion, which I guess it depends on what your goal. We can throw that caveat in there, which in your opinion is your, is the most important, uh, variable, um, and we can start there and we can see where we go from there. For me, I think it really depends on the, are we talking like power lifters specifically or lifters in general? Or well, there you go. Plans? That's, there's our first, there's our first turn, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, if we had cap on here, he would say from, a um, you know, Olympic weightlifting perspective and they're more of a frequency intensity. Definitely. Group. And then. Uh, I invited another guy who couldn't make it. Chris Sullivan works out at the gym. He's competed in a few bodybuilding shows. And so he would say he would be like a volume guy, right? Because he's a bodybuilder. Sure. Yeah. I so think, I, think, I guess we would talk to him from what we know, right? So yeah. your opinion. For a power lift, I think it, um, a lot of it depends on um, the lifter. Uh, some might respond better to a higher frequency. Some might, you know, depending on their lifestyle. And, um, you know, a lot of people will talk about the size of the lifter or if it's a male or female and how strong they are, you know, how long it takes for them to recover. Um, so I think, uh, like, actually a, a mentor of mine, you know, Coach Tom DeLong, he always uh, says it depends. It depends. So it's kind of situational. I think they all have their place. Um you know, it just really depends on the lifter in my eyes. So if you're uh, assessing a new lifter, you have a new trainee that goes in, uh, do you have like a skeleton program that you run in the beginning to assess their fitness and skill level? And then do you make changes or do you go in with a completely blank slate and we have to do some sort of assessment, I assume, but you go com a completely blank set slate and see what what they respond to. Yeah, I think initially um, someone's just starting out, they'll make progress off a uh, pretty low volume, uh, even low frequency. 
Um, does it mean it's optimal for this person? Um, maybe not, but they can still make progress. And then um, you can always increase frequency, increase volume over time um, to continue progress if they stall out. Yeah, I know uh, you mentioned the recovery thing. And I have, I have a, I think, unless I don't have my variables tuned in right, I have a recovery issue, so a lot of volume. So I have to, you know, take it pretty easy on all three of them so that I can recover and be ready for the next session. I mean, I don't work out at an optimal time. I mean, I'm, I either go, you know, super early in the morning um, or, you know, after everyone's, you know, put to bed at night, like, you know, at nine o'clock at night in the gym. Um, and not to say that people have it. I mean, that's not a, well, something like an excuse is an excuse. I mean, that's just the way I, I got to do it. And I got to be careful um, on how much I push it. And, you know, I've, I've had issues where I, I push the variables a little too much and I stall out and I'm go backwards. Um, so would you think that, um, uh, using one of them at a time to push would be a, a good way to um, slowly make progress or do all three have to be manipulated at the same time? I mean, or this could be another depends question. Yeah, I think you could probably uh, do one thing at a time and then that way you really know if it's working for you or not versus if you did, you know, all components and just went super high frequency, high volume. Mm -hmm. um, and that may break you down more. You know, it might be tougher to recover if you're doing high frequency and high volume. Yeah. Versus if you just increase one of them. No, definitely. I, I uh, uh, go overboard at times and try and do everything all at once. And I mean, you feel you end up getting sick or you feel like crap or you get hurt. And, and then you're making, you're not making steps in the right direction. You're going backwards. So yeah. in, in your training, I mean, you, you know yourself pretty well. I mean, you're your bet. You're being, you're the best experiment that you have, right? For um, sure. What what is uh, what are the three uh, parameters that you focus on? You know, I um I started out doing um I guess a lower volume, lower frequency, and I made progress. Um, and then over time, I went to the other extreme and try to higher frequency, you know, squatting uh, three or four times a week, benching four times a week, deadlifting two times. So versus what I started with was more like one squat, one deadlift, two benches. Um, and I made progress with the high frequency as well. And since then, I've actually come back around and found something kind of in the middle that I, I think allows for me um, enough time to recover and to keep making progress. Um, obviously, we know the longer you lift, um, you know, the, the slower the progress, you get kind of peaks and valleys. Um, but um, so I've come somewhere in the middle where for me, I, I tend to do like squat twice a week, bench three times, sometimes four, um, and then uh, deadlift once a week now. And I, I feel that works um, pretty well for me. So you have to keep. Uh, so you obviously keep some sort of training journal so that you can keep track of what yeah. all is what all what what all you're doing and what it's doing to you in terms of recovery, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I track. Um, I actually write out all my uh, weekly training. Um, I do it in advance, and then I can you know I use percent based training, but I also use a little bit of uh, I guess you call it auto regulation. Yeah. where I, I'll use the numbers as guidelines and then make adjustments based off how I feel that training session. So it's nothing set in stone. You know, obviously some days we feel stronger than others and I'll just uh, kind of listen to the body. Uh, but I like having those numbers there to kind of give me something to shoot for and uh, give me a feel for where I'm at versus only doing like an RPE model uh, where maybe, um, you know, I, I won't be able to, hit what I would like to hit numbers wise if I'm just, you know, going by feel for everything. So I don't know. I like to kind of right. use both like a percent base and kind of a go by feel approach. So, but you, uh, so you have your, you have your skeleton 
when you when you walk into the gym, your your uh, ideal workout. Uh, so and you you may do less depending on how you feel. Do you give yourself the ability to um, do more than you have written down, or uh, or do you try and hold hold yourself back and save yourself for? I mean, powerlifter, yeah. you're training for a meet, right? So. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I was actually just listening to a podcast that talked about that. And a lot of times for me, it goes both ways where if I'm feeling really good, I might go a little heavier. But a lot of times we all want to kind of get carried away and we get that ego lifting going where we're like, oh, man, I got to go for PR. But maybe that's not always the best uh, thing to do long term because, you know, it might have a little accumulative effect for the next few training sessions. And you know, when it goes up, something else might have to drop. So uh, right. I try to be smart about it, but obviously sometimes we, we can get carried away if, if things are feeling really good. But um, uh, Coach uh, Kevin Fisher was a, a strength coach of mine actually back in college football at Santa Barbara City College, and he always said, leave one in the tank. And he was um, still is a, a power lifter, and, um, you know, he runs some meets at his gym over there. And Anyways, I always kind of uh, use that as um, some good advice. Is, and we know RPE now, like an RPE 9 would be probably leaving one in the tank. Mm. Um, but I've, I've always kind of utilized that because back in high school, um, I always thought more is better. So I would just kind of push the intensity all the time. And my last set of squats, I remember, you know, this was back in the day. I didn't know a whole lot about training. And I would push it to failure so i'd set the pins just below my depth and i would just go 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 and who knows if it was true failure or not but now obviously we know that's not the best way to train um so i like to leave a little in the tank and i will push it a little higher than my uh, prescribed numbers if i'm feeling good but i i always and i tell lifters this that i program for is you know we don't always need to hit a pr just because it's heavy singles day so yeah, it's obviously best to save it for the platform and yeah so. yeah yeah you gotta be covered for the next i mean you, i mean uh i would i would say you know every, everyone goes through that they want to uh you know make progress every every workout and and they think that progress is only uh a pr and like you know you you lift heavier than last time um but i mean PRs, you can say in when you do, even when you're doing your accessory work, I mean, if you want to focus on PRs in your accessory work, I think that would be better for recovery than going for PRs in your heavier, heavier set. So everyone, I mean, you, you said it, and I think I've heard you say it in the gym, you know, messing around, you know, we're, li we're lifting for the gram, right? We're lifting for Instagram mm -hmm. and uh, we want to show that we're making progress, but um, you know, there are other ways besides the exercises that are the most taxing to make progress and PR in and will be more beneficial to you in the long run than just lifting heavy and going to failure. Cause it, cause I mean, you know, like you said, ego lifting makes you, if you make it, ego lifting makes you feel better than, you know, doing a couple of more glute ham raises. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, a little temporary sacrifice for long-term benefit. Right. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So um, when you train your, your, uh, your trainees um, and you're tailoring your programs to fit their needs, um, do you follow the same sort of training um, guidelines for them as far as, you know, you have a, a training philosophy Right. Whether you want to call it, I mean, you call it whatever you, you, you call it, but if you want to say like a, you know, I'm a five by five guy and you know, everyone that I train is going to do five by five, but I'm going to tailor their percentages and their assistance work based on what they need. Or do you completely um, analyze the lifter and, and see exactly what kind of program they, they will um, benefit from? Yeah, definitely um, try to create an individual effect where, um, you know, assess the lifter and um, the the numbers, sets, rep schemes, they might be similar from one lifter to another depending on, you know, the phase of training they're in. 
Um, if they're a lot of the lifters I program for will be doing the meet at our gym. So it makes uh, the programming a little bit easier when they're, um, you know, for periodization, you know, plan workouts over time, they can be in the same phases. Um, the actual days they train might vary. The frequency might vary. Um, and obviously the, the weights are going to vary. Um, and then some lifters, depending on their competition lifts, you know, will make adjustments. So some pull sumo, some pull conventional, high bar versus low bar. So I just make, make a lot of adjustments there. And um, there are similar, similarities, but there's also a lot of individual differences there. And then if I have uh, some lifters, obviously, competing at different times of the year, they'll be in a different phase. So, Yeah. So, it, so um, a beginner starting out, you know, if they go on um, Team Nation or Bodybuilding.com and they pick out a, a cookie cutter program to start out, um, they shouldn't be married to that program for a long period of time or I mean, uh, I guess they wouldn't have enough experience to know whether or not some, something is working for them or they should stick with something because in the beginning for beginners, any, anything pretty much works. So how married should you, should you be to your program um, in the beginning until you know it, it works or not? Do you have a, a feel for that or is that something that, um, you only gain with experience. I think if you're seeing progress, you can continue to stay on the same program. Um, I, I was on uh, 531 for probably a couple of years. And then I started making some adjustments. Um, before 531, I got a Josh Bryant's, um, what was it, power building ebook, and I got a lot of workouts and some program design from there. Mm -hmm. um, so those kind of gave me a, kind of, a good baseline and um, a feel for just, I guess, being introduced to powerlifting. Um, but I feel like for beginners, they can stay probably on a linear split for a long time and make progress. And then over time, you know, maybe they have to get a little more creative and find what works for them, find their strengths and weaknesses and attack those. And uh, I think it's important to look at a, um, training and competitions and create um, different season or different phases. So have an off season, have a strength phase, mm -hmm. you know, have a peaking phase and a lot of the cookie cutter approaches may or may not have that. Um, but right. I think you could still benefit on probably a basic program when you're first starting out and make really good progress. So, so you think li linear in the beginning and then block once you, consider yourself not a beginner? Um, you know, it, it really depends on the person. Look at Ed Cohen. He made progress for years and years on a linear approach. And I think um, from what I heard on a podcast recently, he talked about his training and how he would set it up for the numbers he wanted to hit at a meet, and he would just work backwards from there and have everything laid out over a long period of time and just run cycle after cycle, meet after meet, and just kept making progress. Uh, for me, I, I kind of do more of an undulated approach. So it's, I think most uh, programs are probably linear because, you know, you're starting off higher reps, lower weight, typically, mm -hmm. hypertrophy phase, high volume phase. And then as you get closer to the competition, you're going to go uh, typically lower reps, higher weights. So it's, it's kind of lin linear, but I'll throw in some undulations where, you know, you got some different uh, volumes and intensities throughout Um even weekly um, or the frequency I should say of uh, heavy lifts I try to increase as I get closer to a peak phase and then you know taper right before so there's uh, there's a lot of different ways to to do that and to peak a lifter you know again it might depend on the lifter what they respond best to and sometimes there's a lot of trial and error I feel um, where you kind of have to get to know who you're coaching and what they respond best to. Right. I think a lot of people lose or I, I got into a discussion. I think it was with Terry, as a matter of fact, somebody mentioned something about volume. Um, and 
I try to explain or get my point across that, you know, it doesn't matter what you, what program you follow. Um, you know, I, I had mentioned that, you know, increasing your volume, in my opinion, was the most important tra training parameter to make progress, right? I made that statement. He, mm -hmm. um, he didn't agree for, for some reason. Um, but, you know, your, your, total, your total volume to bench, you know, at a meet, uh, 275, is going to be less for your next cycle than your total volume you need to bench 15, right? So sure, it's yeah. not it's not to kill yourself intensity wise every um I mean you can do five by five and your five by five is set up to bench two seventy five, but you can still do in the next cycle five by five for the same number of reps and sets, but you know, your weight, your total volume has to increase so you can bench three fifteen, right? So regardless Pro progressive you, overload, right? Right, regardless of what you're doing, undulating or linear or block. Right. If you look at the big picture, your big macro cycle volume is going to be, even if it's slightly, in order to make progress, has to be larger than or higher than your previous macro cycle total volume. So, I mean, yeah, you're, you're still you're still I mean, even if it's not this week, I'm doing, you know, 225 next week, I'm doing, you know, 230, you know, just that slight tick in the next macro cycle your volume has to go up for you to bench 315 if you bench 275 the last meet right yeah i think that's a good uh, i would definitely agree with that um i feel um you know when i look at the um, volume and intensity and frequency i, I actually did use a uh, one of those programs uh, they had a free trial where you can kind of monitor your total volume weekly and you know a little break down your average intensity and all these different things Mm -hmm. And um, when I was looking at my training just over the years, you know, starting off a little more, sorry, a little less uh, volume, lower frequency. And then um, over time, I increased my volume because I noticed my squat baby, you know, became a little squat marathon. Mm -hmm. And when I went to a higher frequency squatting approach, each squat session, was lower i had a lower volume but my weekly volume was greater and so you know i, I th think i made some more progress because of that but coming back around to somewhere in between um i felt gave like you know obviously we're getting older uh my joints more time to recover so that one day a week of like a kind of a squat marathon i felt my knee a little bit more um body was talking to me a little bit more. So when I decreased the daily volume and increased my frequency though, um, seemed to be a little easier on the body for me. Um, and then coming back around. So instead of maybe squatting three or four days to maybe two days, um, kind of like that happy medium for me, I think where I can get a pretty good amount of volume per session, mm -hmm. not overdoing it. And, um, give myself enough recovery, but my weekly volume is probably more, you know, in a, like a better range for me. Yeah. And, and, uh, how important do you think, uh, like we mentioned recovery and, you know, recovery means a lot of things to a lot of different people. I mean, j you know, just days out of the gym isn't necessarily recovery. You know, if you're playing basketball and, you know, doing a bunch of other stuff, um, you know, stuff outside of the gym. You think people not don't focus enough on like their sleep and nutrition as they should to make progress? Yeah, I definitely think most people can, you know, myself included, um, benefit from more sleep and just um, really focusing on, you know, enough recovery between sessions. Um, and, you know, we try to, create training splits that allow for recovery. But obviously if, if we're not getting enough sleep, that's a whole nother issue. The same goes to nutrition. So there's definitely a lot of uh, variables outside of the gym that can benefit us all. Yeah. All right. Uh, I don't want to keep you too much longer. Um, so is there any place that uh, people can find you or you have a website or a Facebook they can check you out on? 
Uh, yeah, just um, Team Breakthrough. Uh, through is T H R U, teambreakthrough.com. It's my website, um, Instagram, Facebook, just my name, Steve Malero, M E L E R O. So, Great. hey, I, th- I appreciate you um, reaching out to me and setting this up, and I'd like to do this uh, whenever I. You do it oh, yeah. whenever it fits our schedules. Yeah, I'll I'll uh I'll make a group. I mean, and we can I'll add people to the group as far as you know who uh, might want who's interested in in participating. Um, and you know, like I said, you know, some of the guys, you know, you, you can't make it every weekend, and you know that's understandable. And maybe we can get maybe Saturday night at eight o'clock isn't the best time for everybody. Maybe it's a uh, you know during the week at lunchtime or whatever, but we'll, we'll, uh, I'll set up a group and we can see who, who can attend when. And I got to keep these going because, you know, um, it's, it's, it's better than, than going to, I mean, not, not that teen, not that websites like teen nation are a bad thing, but, um, I mean, they, they may be a little biased as far as, you know, wanting people to click on their articles and, you know, uh, making their, their uh, philosophies a little more exciting. So people will, will uh, be interested. It's, it's better to hear from people that have, have done it and have experience in some way. And, um, you know, just talking to, you know, we're ate up by this. We like talking about this. And if you get together with a bunch of other bros and to talk about, what you like so set up something up and we can get a schedule going and we can all do topics and you know we'll see how how big we can get this or you know where it goes uh when's your next meet to be determined i just came off the anaheim yeah. fit expo and yeah I was, I was looking at maybe uh december i know there's mm-hmm. the one in ventura and then there was another one yeah. uh, drug tested one um uh, kind of near Anaheim, Long Beach area, but December is a crazy month for us, and I don't think that's going to work. So, I actually mm-hmm. reached out to uh, Coach uh, Fisher, who I mentioned earlier, about you know yeah. if they're going to see if they're going to be hosting one at his new gym in Santa Barbara, and uh, he said maybe in February he might shoot for. It. So, if that's the case, that might be a nice local one. I, I try to just focus lately as our um, powerlifting team has been growing at our gym. I just try to focus on coaching, um, especially while we have first time competitors and all that. So um, eventually probably be able to do our, our meets at our gym, but for the time being um, just coaching on those and then trying to find a couple meet, two or three meets a year. um, I can do on my own. Yeah. I was looking at the one just cause it's local to one in Ventura. And then there was a California state and Whittier in March. Okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But uh, if Santa Barbara is is happening around that time, that's a little closer than going to Whittier. So, absolutely, that'll be a fun. And a one. nicer drive. A nicer drive. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'll keep an eye on the calendar and hopefully keep in touch with uh, Coach Fisher and see if uh, that's going to take place or not. Because they haven't had one there in a couple years or so. Yeah, they've been moving. You said or something, right? They moved uh, locations. I still haven't seen it yet. But I'd like to make it out there and check it out, and then. Hopefully they can get some meets going on over there again. Right. All right, man. Well, it was good talking to you. You too. Thanks again. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, no problem. I'll send you, I'll send something out. We can get this going. All right, brother. Thanks a lot. You take care. All right. Later, man. Wait.